Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, I've got the privilege of talking to a gentleman who contacted me. His name is Corporal. Uh, to his friends, uh, he's from the great state of Kentucky around Daniel Boone National Forest. I'm going to let him take it from here. Uh, how are you doing tonight, sir? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good considering, you know, I have to go in for heavy chemo the next five days and uh, start that. But uh, my, my spirits are... Hi, and uh, I think uh, I think I'm in clear mind, and uh, I'm doing real good, sir. Very good, and it, it sounds like at at this point you're wanting to make sure that what you've experienced over the years is heard by others and uh, pretty much recorded. Yeah, yeah, because uh, that is giving me six months to a year to live but uh you know i don't believe that that's up to god and you know it's in his hands and uh that's the way i put it you know and uh you know i wouldn't lie i wouldn't lie on my deathbed you know well i wouldn't lie anyway yes sir uh, is there anything you want me to tell you about my childhood, where I was born and uh, raised, and uh, how I got into the, uh, you know, the, my first escort site? And- so, Corporal, I would say anything that you feel is important for the listener to know that would lead into uh, your sightings or interactions with the creature, I I would definitely say share that as well, but I will, I'll leave it up to you what you would like to share. Okay. My, uh, my friends called me call for the phone on January 3rd, 1974 in Beverly, Kentucky. That's Clay County, Kentucky. But I, but I recently live in, uh, Leslie County. It it borders Clay County, and I live right on the edge of uh, Dan. Well, it's 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 called the uh, Daniel Boone National Forest. It's just a little patch of it. It's not out west where the big part of Daniel Boone is, where the hundreds of thousands of acres is. Now this is a game preserve of twenty nine thousand acres. It it. it It takes half of Leslie County and half of Clay County. And I live right on the edge of it. And uh, the only reason I'm allowed to live here is because I'm part Cherokee. My mama was full stock and the Cherokee Indians was allowed to live on it until they died if they they had so much in their bloodline. So me and my mama was about the last one uh, uh, living. And... uh, And uh, I was born in Beverly, and I, mo- I moved to Stanick, Kentucky. Well, it's called Essie, Kentucky, or Stanick, and called it the one. From the time I was four or five years old, I, you know, I was you know, a mountain boy. You know, I, I was raised in these mountains, that's all I know. You know, this not this might sound funny, but I was on this cat trail. I don't know if you what a cat would know what a cat trail is. It's a trail that back in the fifties where the caterpillar dozers cut roads to log the timber. And I was there in about eighty two uh, uh, walking in cat roads and uh, 
I found I found a turd one time, and it was as big as my leg and long as my leg, and it couldn't have been a bird because back then we didn't have bird. We have birds now, but we didn't have birds then. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I was excited about it. It was so big, and I went and showed it to my daddy. And uh, he looked at it, and uh, see, my papa was a park ranger for 50 years for for, for this game reserve, 29,000 acres of it, and he patrolled it. And uh, he he said he had dozens of reports of uh, people seeing Sasquatch, you know, and his but his superiors wouldn't let, would make him throw it in the trash because he he could lose his job and his uh, career. And things could happen to his family. They told him and all this, so he wouldn't talk about it. But he did that. Really, he retired. But anyway, I showed that turned my daddy, and he called my papa and showed it to him. And you know, how you are when you're a kid. We had we we had this house with a round uh, the porch went all the way around it, and he said, son, the adults were talking. The adults were talking, uh, go back and play and find a house somewhere. Well, I got up my under the uh, porch, and I listened to their conversation. And he said, son, he said, that's a Sasquatch. Well, he said, dad, I've been missing hogs left and right. See, that's how we made a living was with hogs. We had two or three hundred of them, and we were getting like a dozen of them. I mean, two hundred fifty pound hogs ready to harvest. We had a dozen of them a month getting missing, and we had this fence. There was no way they could get out of it. Okay. Well, see, it was well, it was three or four years later when I, I guess I, I guess I was nine or ten, in about nineteen eighty four. And it, uh, you know, it's my job to slap the hogs. Well, I went, I went, and I, I went in the building where Dad kept the food for the hogs, and I, I fixed them up some slop, and I poured it out in the troughs. And you know what well, hogs are? How they love deep. They run out and slop it down. They would never come out of their pen. And I tried to coax them out of it, scare them out of it, and everything. And all of a sudden, I looked up, and, uh, uh, I heard something charging down this hill. Come, it it sounded like a freight train coming down the side of a hill. And it run down there, and it stuck its hand. Its arm was so long. It stuck its hand over into that pen, and it grabbed, it grabbed one of them 250 pound hogs and throwed it over its shoulder like it was nothing and packed it off. And it scared me. There was two of them, and, and while he was packing it off, there was another one coming and hitting the building. Boom, 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 over and over, like it didn't want me to come out there and take its food. And you know, there probably was no food back for them there because there was no deers or bears in it from the feed on. Because uh, yeah, it hadn't become a game reserve yet. Yeah, it didn't become a game reserve until like 1989. But anyways, that thing packed that hog off, and it it wasn't a sasquatch that was hitting the building because I looked through the cracks. This thing had a dog head. It's K nine years. It looked just like it looked just like a, a Ger, a German police, the black one, and it was black. And it had a big scar down the side of its face, and the, the scar went down in its face uh, and knocked one of its eyes out. It was the old scar, and it was a hit in that building. And it may have been another dog man that uh, packed the hog off. And I, and I looked at the other end of the building through a crack, and I, and I seen a silhouette of something coming. And it was huge. I thought it was my daddy because my daddy's six ten. I thought it was my daddy coming, but it was a Sasquatch. It walked. It hit, walked up to that building, and I swear, 
It looked through them cracks of the board, and its eyes turned red, and I went straight into a coma and passed out and went into where mom said she found me in a seizure three hours later. And I believe that Sasquatch saved my life. But it was the the two dog men that, that was packing the hot dog. The Sasquatch wasn't, wasn't fooling with them, but I believe with all my heart that that female Sasquatch uh, saved my life because I've seen her breath. And I was just a kid. And uh, that dog man was hitting that building so hard we had it up on four cinder blocks and it knocked it off onto the ground. And I, and I swear to this day that I believe that Sasquatch had come up my driveway, up my yard, and to the hog pen. And uh, and I heard the hog going out of here and squalling. And I all of a sudden hit, just quit squalling. And my dad, my dad found it in a forks of a tree hanging. And it was still bleeding out fresh. And he said, them that, well, they caught, they, they, they caught wood boogers. They didn't really get on like that Sasquatch back then. He said, them wood boogers have got my, been packing my hog off. I said, my daddy, I said, it was a dog. He said, son, a dog can't pack a 250-pound, you know, animal off. So we called my family in, so we set up uh, overnight, you know, as usual. I was nosy listening to my papa talk. And my papa called uh, what I was explaining to him. He called it a slew foot. And I've never heard that name to this day. He said, there's sleuth woods in that game reserve. And he said, the government knows about them. And uh, they just don't, I don't know why they don't want people to know about them, but it took me about four days to come out of like a, can, a catatonic state where I could talk. And, uh, <clears throat> And I've been I've been suffering from severe post traumatic stress disorder ever since then, and uh, it's just hard for me to talk about it. Well, I'm about to choke up right now. It's it's just so hard to talk about that. Uh, 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 but my mommy told me she said the only way you're gonna get relief is get your pink elephant out of the room and talk about it. I said I don't know who to talk about, you know. And she died, you know. She was a Christian. She didn't know nothing about the internet. I said, "Well, I get on the internet and see." When I when I was in the Marines, I was trained in interrogations and uh, remote viewing. And I can talk to a man tell if he's lying to me in a second. Just about, about I can talk to him two or three minutes and about tell you if he's a liar or not. I'm sorry. Can I can I clarify something really quick? Yeah. So. You said you were in the Marines and you were involved with remote viewing. Yeah. Can you go into that? And, uh, pardon. Is that anything you can share about? Well, it was supposed to be kept secret. They kept me under a ten-year gag order. It might have been a twenty-year gag order. I wasn't supposed to talk about it because. It was took out of the military in 1969. I don't know if you know what remote viewing is, but, uh, you know, with the people that they test and, uh, you know, and, uh, I guess, you know, they pick out, out of 600 Marines and the sensitive, what they call the sensitive ones, you know, and, and I was always a sensitive person in my Family and yeah. my papa, my mom and papa, mama were full stock Cherokee Indian. They told me I was special because I was sensitive. And uh, I was the only grandchild that, you know, experienced, experience, you know, what I've seen. Because uh, she, you know, my grandma believes if that Sasquatch shows itself to you, she calls it the big brother of a mountain. And, you know, I always respected the mountain. And I, when I was young and five, six years old, I could tell, you know, the 
I could be in the mountains and uh, it would be it, it, just like the ground would start breathing and the leaves would turn, you know, just like a cold, a cold front coming through and I could feel the arm on the feeling. And I know when I to get out of the mountain because I used to coon hunt with my dad. And, you know, he trusted my feelings and we went out the land between the lakes one time. Was gonna go coon hunting, and we had high dog coon dogs. And I got out, I got out of the truck. I said, "Bad, I got a bad omen of feeling. I ain't letting my dog out." I said, "I ain't even gonna get out of the truck." And he told my uncle Dean. He said, "Dean said, I ah, he he just lazy and ain't want to walk." He said, "No." He said, "When that boy tells you he feels something wrong, something's wrong." I don't know what it was about that place. You know, I've never studied it or nothing, but there's something on us out there at the land between the lakes at Kentucky, at the Kentucky Lake out there. I always got a bad feeling about that place. Yes, there are many terrible things that have happened in that area regarding Dog Man over the years. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was Dog Man. I never did get on my spilling from Sasquatch. Seemed like they're friendly. And I believe that female Sasquatch seemed, uh, uh, and I'm going to get to that. I think in 2017, I sent another one, but before, I'm going to tell you the ones before. Me and my buddy was ginseng down on the river at Red Bird and hit the, uh, you know, right between. Daniel Boone National Preserve, and was was gonna go up through this little drain, and, and uh, this uh, well, I didn't see it, but I know what it was. It it come down through a thicket, because see, this is timber. It's never been cut. It's it's virgin timber, been there for hundreds of years, and and this twenty nine thousand acres. And you know, I ain't gonna lie, we was, we was uh, going in there illegal to dig ginseng. But, anyways, was up in this drain and this, and this, whatever it was, was a shaking a tree at the top of a mountain, son. It was, it was a big old wild oak. It was a swaying hip from side to side, and you could hear the cracking. And I, and I heard my cousin say, oh, my God, did you see that, Ed? I said, no, I don't see nothing, because he was up above me. He seen it. So and here he come running wide open. When he come running, he said that thing got so close to him, he could smell it. He, he said it smelled like rotten garbage. And he said it got so close to him that, 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 that he could hear its breath. And he told me to run on to the car, and I, but I heard it crashing down through the brush. It sounded like a somebody put a put a Ford F two fifty on top of a mountain and just put it in nature and let it roll down through that thicket. Is what it sounded like, but I didn't see it at that time. But uh, he always made fun of me, and he told me he said uh, he said Corporal, he said I'd never make fun of you again. He said I seen that thing. And uh, he said, I'll never make fun of you again. And now he's a he's a researcher, and uh, he's got he's got some film of it, pretty pretty decent film. I got a picture of it because in front of my house is a big cliff, and behind my house I own 16 acres, and I sold the coal off of it. And I believe, I, and uh, they cut the top of the mountain off. I believe, I believe they messed their home up over and cut their, because it was four or five big caves over. And and one fall, I took a picture of it up there. He, he was sitting there holding its little one. I seen it run over, pick its little one up, and uh, I took it. I took it through my picture window. So I got my phone up, and I, I was going to take a picture of it. That, and before I met. Mashed the button on the camera, so I hit no. I was taking a picture of it, and it ducked down. Well, I could still see its head. I still got a picture of its head, but you can zoom up, 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 up on it. You can see its head perfect. I've seen it five or six times, but uh, you're scared to talk about it when I'm talking about it. He thinks it's a bad omen to talk about it. Well, the Cherokee Indians are those too, but they want you to talk respectful about them, but. The, the dog man, they they say that my my 
grandmother blazed up. You know, in the uh, first chapter of the Bible, when God cast uh, the Satan down to earth, he tried to, cur- he tried to corrupt the human race. And uh, they bred them demons with their humans. And uh, that made dog man and all these cryptids. That's, that's how she believed they formed. But I've never known the or Sasquatch being, being uh, evil because one saved my life. And uh, if that Sasquatch hadn't walked up my driveway and come up, I mean, it, well, I, I watched it walk all the way up that building because I could see through two cracks where he had two cracks where it could see down to the house. And it walked all the way up there and stuck its eyes in them cracks and its eyes were black. And its eyes turned so blood red that it hit me and it was just like a, it was just like a, I don't know, I, I can't explain it. It was like something hit me that uh, it wanted me to pass out because I was so scared. And it, it never had no intentions to hurt me when it done that. It just wanted to knock me out. When it hit me, I felt a vibration through my body. It, it was so violent that uh, I, I just laid down, just, just went to sleep. And my mommy said when she come home from work, I heard her later that she found me laying there shaking. And there was footprints all around, all, all around that building. And uh, my dad still got cast of them today. And uh, he caught one of the dog men uh, packing, packing a pig off, but it was a baby pig. And, and uh, my daddy was in a marine too. And uh, he, he had his gun he brought home from the war. And he said he, he said he. He said he shot it three times and it didn't fade it a bit. So he kept on running with it. And every time he'd find them, he'd find them hanging in forks of a tree. Why would they put them in a forks of a tree? Why wouldn't they eat them? And anyway, 2017, you know, I, I, I'd caught this crippling arthritis and I was trying to exercise as much as I can. And I walked up this road about a mile. And it was just off the ridge where my dad had the hogs. And I heard something going, making a real funny, weird noise. And I looked over and that thing, I seen that thing's head and it stood up. And 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 I ble- and I swear you know I can't swear to it, it was the same Sasquatch, but uh, seemed like it seemed like it told me something. I saved your life when you were a kid, and that's what I got out of it. You know, uh, it raised up and just stood there and didn't move until I did. And uh, so I started walking back home, and it parallel it paralleled me home all the way for a mile. And it had to go through two or three, up and down two or three ridges to keep up with me. And it followed me all the way to my doorstep until I walked in the door. And I felt so safe around that thing. I don't know. And I believe it was the same Sasquatch that thing that saved my life. And I was 47. So this was uh, around 40 years later. I believe it was the same Sasquatch in, in, the, in the hills, most, you know, just with a group of people coon hunting. But uh, when I got bad vibes, bad vibes, I would go back to the truck and tell them guys, I said, man, I don't feel right here. I'm going to go back to the truck. They said, how are you crazy, Corporal? You, what's wrong with you, buddy? You're a Marine. Are you scared? What are you scared of? And I swear. When I when the dog men was around, they they put off a certain feeling. I don't I don't know what it was, but uh, I could feel it. It was ominous, and them and them thing is them things are demonic. This thing that was hitting my daddy's building, it was a great big building, and it hit knocked it out. We had it sitting on up on four cinder blocks each. Well, we had to see four. 
experience like that, but a lot of people have. So I'm kind of on the fence if they're aliens. Uh, you know, myself, my mama, I believe what my mama believes. I believe they're demonic. The dog men surely are. And I've heard about, you know, tales about, you know, Sasquatch, you know, being being dangerous with people too. Because Les, he done an interview with a guy that run into a Sasquatch right before he got to his uh, girlfriend's car. And he said he thought it was going to kill him. And that's how I got interested in Les and... You know, I I can read a liar a mile away. I, what Les tells you, you write it down. It's true. No, Les is a great guy, Les Odell, no doubt. And, I, and I, those two guys, those three guys I was going to talk to, it was uh, Scott Carpenter. I was getting ready to do an interview with him when he got sick and died. Mm. And... Uh, and that guy from Sasquatch Theory. I picked three guys out that I thought was the honest, most honest on the internet. And it was a, a, a guy from Sasquatch Theory. Oh, yeah. Miguel. Yep. Miguel, yeah. Miguel. And uh, he wanted me to do it in an email, and I just couldn't write it down because, you know, uh, I just don't think I could have got it right writing it down. But, uh, yeah, I had that experience, man, and, I, and it stuck with me for 40 years now, and, I, and I've struggled with it. Over the years, what would you say is probably the most intense dogman encounter that you've heard of in your area? Well, when my cousin went hunting out in the Daniel Boone National Forest, the big part of it where there's a uh, probably a million acres, the, and uh, he had five dogs, and uh, he said he seen one grab a hold of his dog and twist it up like a pretzel and throw it off, throw, uh, and throw it hundreds of feet, he said. But he said, throw it down a mountain. And, uh, and the rest of his dogs run off, and he lost all of his dogs. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't even come. He, he said he never, never he had five days left for five dogs come back from there. And he, he thought that it killed his first one because he said after it killed him and throwed it, it started running out the, after the other ones he yelping. And he said they went out, plumb out of here and uh, yelping. And he said, he, he said that dog man was running straight toward him. And he said he said he had a, a forty caliber on his side, you know, just for snakes. And he and he said he seen that thing. And he said he felt defenseless. He said that forty caliber probably wouldn't have faced it when he seen that thing. He said it had my he said it was built like a linebacker. He said it was wide as it was long. He, and he said it had to. He said no. He said he kind of had, had, had like hands. He said no had paws. But he said that the uh, bottom legs was like a hind legs of a of a dog, but it stood upright. But he said when it took off running, it went down on all fours. And he said he thinks it killed all his dogs, and he never did go back in the forest again. Sure. Well, the, there's a documentary on it that he made. He was my cousin. That he made, uh, I'll send it to you. I forget that these guys who made a documentary on Dog Man. Uh, my, I forget his name, but anyway, I'll, I'll send it to you. Oh, is it Tony Merkel? Yeah. Wow. No, yeah. that's the where guy. He, where he took them to the gate, and the gate was closed, and they had to walk six miles in. That's your cousin. What are you about? Yeah, that was my cousin that or got his dog dog skilled. What are the chances? That's incredible. They wanted me to go with him, but I said, buddy, 
I swore down the mountain of every little sister. I said, man, I said, there's dog man in these hills. He said, you're crazy, Corporal, but he he don't tell me that now. Right, exactly. Um, Any people that you know that have had interactions with dog man or Sasquatch, you know, feel free to pass on my contact information if they would want to talk and share what they've encountered as well. I would love to well, talk I to talk them. Well, I've talked to them, but I, I've, had, I've had several cousins that had experiences, four or five, but I don't know if they would talk or not, but I'll ask them for you. Absolutely. Um, I would appreciate that. And so you you said earlier that you had some interaction with remote viewing. Is that anything that you could speak more to, or do you not feel comfortable doing that? Oh, the remote viewing? Yes, sir. You want me to talk? You want me to talk about that? Yeah, if you feel comfortable sharing anything about that. Well, uh. I was under a gag order, but it's out of date now. The remote viewing is like, okay. It's a, if you want to find Bin Laden, right? You would get a piece of his possession that he owned, like a picture of his son, picture of him, or just a, a possession of, that he owned that, you know, he greatly appreciated. And we would get it. And we'd blind, well, they call it the Estes method. It's kind of like the Estes method. We would blindfold yourself and turn on, and turn on these uh, AM, FM radios that would run backwards. It would pick up radio stations, but it would say words backwards. And we would ask questions, and uh, and we would sit and rub with their fingers with their possessions and and see if we could see visions of where they was at. See, that, that was doing that, you know, to find out where where the enemy was or could be or was going to strike. We used to predict the things. But it's kind of, if you ever heard of the Estes method? Uh, yes, Corporal, I have, yeah. It's kind of like it. But we use something of theirs that's valuable that they owned, like a piece of jewelry or a ring or a picture, and we'd sit and rub it, and we could see if we could see visions of uh, where they was at or where they was going to, their military was going to strike next or, you know, things like that. So I was picked out of 500 Marines, you know, I was 12 out of 500 that made it because um, I'm very, I'm, uh, well, I call myself, I'm not a medium. I call myself a sensitive. I'm very sensitive because, you know, I, I, uh, I had a girlfriend, God rest her soul, she was into that paranormal. She kept on, kept on wanting me to get her, take her on a date to the family house. I said, I had a bunch of money, man. I don't want to go to the family house and just waste a thousand dollars to stay one night. And it, and it took us two years to get a date to do it. Just to book it up. And finally, we got a date to do it. I tell you what, I, I would never step foot back in that house again. Because my girlfriend, she levitated off the bed. Really? Yes. Oh, like dear. she got possessed. And, uh, and uh, she, she was talking to me, to me, to me in an evil voice saying, saying that, uh, you know, uh, well, I ain't going to say what she was saying. But, uh, and the bed was a shaking, rattling. And uh, that place is, uh, it's not just to make my, that, something wrong with that place. Corporal, were you used to, to find Bin Laden then? I had this ring that he, that he wore. I don't know how the military got it, but 
I put that ring on and I could feel it. I could, I could see, I could, I could see glimpses of him. But you know, he was in like a, a four room, a, a room of four walls, and you know, you just couldn't tell where he was at. That's all I could. That's the best I could see of him. And uh, so you could actually see Bin Laden. I could see glimpses of him. Glimpses, yeah. Okay, it's like, uh, it's like, I see glimpses, okay? Like you walk into a door frame and I got my camera on flash like every three seconds. When it flashes every three seconds and I get a glimpse of him, that's how I'd get a glimpse of him. But all I could see was like four walls. He he stayed head good. And uh, I might have seen him in them four walls where they found him at. I don't know. But, uh, you know, we couldn't tell for sure, but, uh, one, uh, the, that's wrong. So Don Hussein now, uh, I know for one, for one, for a fact that, that, uh, one, one of my, uh, Marine buddies, uh, uh, uh said he, that he's in his hometown down, uh, dug down in a hole. Really? And they didn't believe him. Wow. They thought he was bullshitting, but that's yeah. where they found him at. And uh, you know, they give me they get they give me like rags of him that he you know, whatever his religion was, was that he'd lay down and pray on. But I never did see no place of him, you know, I never got nothing of him. And my and and my uh sergeant getting upset with me, you know, because he he was a there was 12 of us, and he was the, you know, CEO, and uh, he was getting upset with me because we do this, this was drooling. We'd do this 18 to 36 hours at a time. And they believed the more exhausted we were, the more we could see. And I believe that was true. And when, that's the only time I could see things when I was really exhausted, wanting to go to sleep. You know, but when I was fresh and, you know, ready, ready to go, I never did see no visions or nothing. Was there a name for the group of the 12 of you? Yeah, we did. Is that anything you can share or probably not? Well, I'd, I'd rather not because sure. of... I think I, I'm probably the only one that's ever talked about it. <laughs> right. And I, I probably could still get in trouble if they know they talked about it, but I ain't got long to live, so, but, you know, I ain't worried about it. Sure. Um, I totally understand. Uh, do you think there's any truth to uh, giants being seen in Afghanistan? For sure. Because my, my Matthew was in the same mu- unit. And he wasn't, he wasn't in the Navy, he was in the Army. We're not in the same unit, but he was in the same, what you call, clique over there when they killed that giant. Oh, he was, so he was involved with the that particular, when they took down the giant? He, he wasn't involved with it, but it, uh, 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 he, he, his base was. Because they removed, they removed it out of the, out of the uh, seals or killed it. The army come in with helicopters and flew it out there and covered it up. He said he he said he seen it, but it was covered up and he never got to see no details of it. But he said it looked like it was at least twelve foot long. They had it covered up with a tarp. And they took it to the base, and uh, they put it in a jet. No, no, they put it, they put it in a big aircraft carrier and took it took it somewhere. I'd say they probably take it area fifty one somewhere. That's where he thinks they took it to do an autopsy on it. Yeah, I believe in the giants over there. I sure do. Absolutely. 
Do you think the government has access to Bigfoot and Dogman? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Because uh, when me and my cousin was a gin singing, he reported it. He reported it to the uh, game warden. And, and the game warden's our first cousin. And uh, he said, I'm tired of getting these reports and nobody doing nothing about it. And then did not let me submit it. Even the game warden, you know, the higher ups than that told him to throw away the, you know, what was reported. But evidently, he must have got on to him pretty hard because from two hours later, we drove down through where and there was four Humvees of, uh, of, uh, National Guard there, and they, and they was armed to the tee too. So they're standing around their Humvees. And it was late in the evening, getting ready to get dark. And uh, I don't know if they run into it or not, but uh, uh we showed him a, a, a footprint. The game warden. He said, they can't be no barefooted man with a foot that big walking around in these hills. Which I didn't see it, but I heard it come down the mountains. On it. it sounded like a freight train coming down the side of that mountain. And it scared the living life out of my cousin. And he's never been again singing again. Mm. Because uh, we called the game warden. He said, what are you doing down in there anyway, boy? You know, look over me. I'm a country boy. I talk country. He said, well, we're just scouting out a place to hunt this fall. Because, <laughs> so, you know, it was a little early. The ginseng said, we got ginseng season, too. And, uh, and you can get fined $10,000 in five years in a federal penitentiary for digging ginseng early. And, Corporal, thinking back to how you saw the Sasquatch, what do you think, what was the most vivid detail in your memory from the times that you've seen it over the years? The first, the first, the first time I seen it, I seen it about 50 yards away, walking up beside my house, and I thought it was my dad. That's when... One of the dog men grabbed the hog and packed it off. There was two of them. And one of them was a hit in the side of the building to keep me from coming out of it, I guess. And I scared to death. And, I, and it was time for my dad to come home. And I was looking down the hill through the cracks. And I seen something walking up through where I said, what? A big silhouette. Well, because my dad, he's 6'10". He's a big guy. And I thought it was him, but it wasn't. It was the Sasquatch. And I walked, I watched it walk all the way up to me because when I seen it, I got, I got a peaceful feeling. When it got right up to them two cracks where he, he had that, he had that place fortified. He knew them things were there because they're still in their hog feed, still in their corn. They was turning the doors off of the hinges and getting their feed. And packing our hogs off and everything, so we had we had to quit that business. They put us out of business. Some dog man did, but anyway, when it walked up there, I seen two black eyes. They were black as coal, and all of a sudden, it was just like a little pupil lit up in each eye, and it lit it lit up and it blinded me till I couldn't see nothing, and it just like it put me to sleep. And my mom sent me, sent me laying her in that building. Incredible. And you know, when I was a young boy then, I didn't know what Sasquatch was. See, in 1979, she took me to the driving theater and watched King Kong. Mm. And I told her, you know, a young boy, I said, King Kong saved my life, mommy. Well, she didn't know what to think about that. Because, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about I seen it peeking through my windows. It peeked through my windows three or four times and scared me. And and uh, 
my mom always tell everybody, said, yeah, uh, Ed, he always slept with us till he was nine years old. It wasn't Ed. I, I, I slept with him because that thing was looking through my window. And, and one night it snowed. And uh, he looked through my window. My, I guess my dad changed his track. And when I went to school and I come back at night, uh, day, he, he had my bed moved from the head of my bed where I could see the window. He had it moved in the middle of the room, and he put metal bars over over the windows. Now, why did he do that? Because he seen that thing's footprint out there. And he thought he might have been trying to get his kids. And uh, he had to throw rocks on top of the house, man. And he blamed it on me. He said, Ed, he said, next time I catch a rock up on top of his house, he said, you're going, he said, you're going to be punished. He said, I'll make you hold the garden for the week. I said, Daddy, it wasn't me. I ain't never throw a rock on top of that. Uh, on top of the house. Well, it happened every night, night after night. My daddy was getting pissed. Well, I went and stayed with my grandma with a week for a week, and he got all the rocks off top of the house, and it happened again, and I wasn't there. I said, see, Daddy, I told you it wasn't me. And one night, they bombarded her house with rocks. You could hear it, boom, pow, ping, pow. We had a pretty steady house, you know. He built it real thick, you know, because he was, you know, paranoid from Vietnam War. And he had that place fortified. And uh, any, anyways, they, they bombarded the top of our house with rocks. And he'd get us all in the living room, and he'd sit in there with his M, M, uh, M14 and uh, sit there with cock locked and loaded. I said, Mommy, what's wrong with Daddy? She said, I he just had a flashback from the war. But she knows what was going on. She knows. Uh, let me tell you a movie I just watched that just like my situation. You watch uh, that movie. It's a, it's a big movie. It's called Something in the Woods. You got to watch it. Write that down. And see... This uh, woman was having problems with Sasquatch while her husband was going to work. And the, little, and the little boy, he wasn't scared of the Sasquatch like I was, but she was wanting to move, and he said, we're not moving because, uh, you know, we can't afford to move. And, and they got into quarrels just like my mom and daddy did. And I'm not saying this divorce. My mom and dad got divorced. But I'm not saying that was the problem, but uh, she was saying, uh, uh, I'm leaving this mountain with my children because I don't feel like my children are safe. He said, well, I'm not leaving. And, but she left and he stayed. And uh, we got a divorce and uh, I can't say it was over that, but... Uh, she wanted her children safe, and she moved like to a city and went to Middlesbrough. Well, not a city, but a great big town. Sure did. And uh, watch that movie, and it, and, it, and it correlates exactly what I went through. Over the years, have you ever heard of anyone seeing a hyena type creature down in Kentucky? A hyena? Yes, sir. Like a full stock a hyena, like from Africa. Yes, sir. No. All right. No, I've seen some. I've seen some striped black coyotes. A somewhat. Maybe with a few stri- straps down your back. Maybe like they might have been crossed. And uh, there's coyotes here that's uh, way bigger than, uh, you know, coyotes was back in the sixties and seventies. My uncle killed a cow a few months ago because the government's got a bounty on them now. There's so many of them. So they're killing everybody with the dogs and cats, or, you know. And, and horses and everything. But I don't mm. think they're killing the horses. I think that's the dog man. 
But uh, anyways, uh, he killed a cow that weighed 100 pounds. Wow, that's huge. The weirdest looking cow I've ever seen. So they put a bounty on them, and uh, they put a $20 bounty on each one of them's head that you can kill. If you kill 10, that's $200. And that's about what he kills them all, about 10 of them. Takes them down to the park range, their tail off, takes them down to the park range, and they pay him. And I, and I tell you what, about the cow, another thing you, that, that brought up something. Every time I, I had a, I had an involvement with the Bigfoot, uh, I, I could hear cows barking, not too far away. And it seems to me like, you know, I, I, I ain't much on the internet. All I want is Les and Miguel, and I watched Scott Carpenter, but he died. I, I, I just watched two channels now. And I believe that, the, you know, you can call me crazy, but I, I believe that uh, the Bigfoot is like a... Us having a pet, a dog as a pet. I think Bigfoot has them as like pets, <clears throat> and they they dirty work for for the Bigfoot and, and kill game for them. Because every time I, I've ever seen a Bigfoot, I've heard the cows not far away, like thirty or forty yards away, going crazy, barking. Yep, and making office noise of their wool. Have you ever heard of a person in your area uh, killing a Bigfoot or a dogman and having a specimen? Well, I'll have to. Uh, my dad, he's still alive. I'll call him tomorrow. Uh, see, back back in them days, it was just uh, old eight millimeter films, and him and his daddy uh shot one, and uh, buried it. And uh, filmed it every bit on a eight. Uh, it was a black and white eight millimeter camera. <clears throat> and but uh, I know exactly where it's buried at. Does that film still exist? Do you think? Because uh, I was the one who helped the film while they dug the dug the grave and uh, it hit the. Uh, uh, I hate to tell you this, but. It was a juvenile. It was about. It might have been. It might have been five foot tall, but he thought they was taking his hogs, and uh, I don't think he was. I think. I think that whatever my papa called them things, I've never heard of them called them called that. Leaf foot, blue foot, mm. something like that. That's what he called the dog man. But uh, yeah. My dad, my daddy uh, emptied the thirty round clip into one. Into a bigfoot. Well, I tell you what, I I, I even had cow tail, and it hit up to me like it was a human when I looked at its eyes, where it was young, and uh, it, it, and it looked nothing like the grown ones because I seen a big female. Now it looked more ape like. But the ones that little ones juvenile, they look uh, they look just like me and you but just with hair on them. And I remember they felt so bad about that. I said, Well dad, I said, what you call the game warden and just uh, let him know you killed it. He, he you know what he told me. He said, I don't believe the world's ready to see it yet. 
and he and uh, my dad's still alive, but my stepdad, he uh, that was my real dad that raised me. He's dead now, but uh, he was a Navy, he was a Navy SEAL too. I mean, he was a Navy SEAL, but my dad, he was in the Marine in the Marines, but uh. Is does the film of that still exist? Do you think? Yeah, he's got it. He he's got it in his old trunk. Oh yeah. Yeah, he got he he got he got one of them projector things that shows projectors on the wall, and he still got it. So it's it's film of the actual dead Bigfoot. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But uh, but uh, you know it's uh, it's it's really hard to make out Miss Granny and Fuzzy, and uh, where he shot her, where he emptied a thirty round clip in it, uh, it was in bad shape. Oh, I'm I'm sure it was. And were you there when he actually shot it? Sorry, if you can remind me. Well, I was in the house. Oh, you were in the house. That's right. And I was yep. on the back porch, and I hear it. And I hear it let out a squall. And at the end of it, well, it was like a, it, it, it went like from a high-pitched squeal all the way down to a low guttural. And that guttural just went away until it faded away. I think I think when it went sound, it was dead. But my papa, before he died, he told me, I said, if I go up there and dig in that, because uh, they dug it in kind of shell graves. It might have been three or four feet deep, they said. They would just tell me this. And, uh, but they showed me, uh, I, I, you know, I was nosy. My daddy would go to work. And I'd get into I'd get into the film collection, and I, I, I watched it. It's kind of fuzzy and grainy, but you, you can still see, see its face real good. And it looks just like a human, because they got... My papa filmed it real close to its face. Uh, he, he said he felt like he killed a human. He, he said that, you know, because I believe them things are half human and half natural. Sure. But the Bible says they bred where, with their women trying to corrupt their human race because they didn't want to worship Mar uh, Queen Mary in heaven. And, uh, Lucifer said he wasn't going to worship a human being that was less than him, so he was cast to heaven. Oh. I mean, he was cast to earth, and he corrupted what cryptids we see, and there's all kinds of them. And I believe that. Uh, other cryptids, too, that was little bitty things about, uh, that I guess they wouldn't eight to 12 inches tall, like old grim ones. Yeah, and I, and I see them run in the holes and stuff, run up and under trees and stuff and hide. They'd run out and laugh at me and giggle, then run back under there. When, you know, in, back into the holes they had made. Now I've seen stuff like that too, and I, I couldn't tell you what that was. How far away from Hopkinsville are you? Okay, Hopkinsville is a western Kentucky. Okay, that's yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, I'm in southeast Kentucky in Leslie County at the Leslie Clay line on Highway 406. Have you heard about the Hopkinsville goblins though? Oh uh -uh, no, I never heard of that. Yeah. They sound similar to what you'd seen. Yeah, I saw I'd see these little bitty creatures. That, that, uh, sometimes I'd see them in my yard, and they'd run down in like little crawdad holes and stuff. I can't say I've seen them all the time, but I, I guess I've seen them uh, at least a few dozen times, and there'd be three or four of them. And they and then they giggle at me, run around in circles, and run down back down into the hole. It was green looking. 
a big old eyes. Their eyes was bigger than anything on their body. I guess they were not a foot tall. But they were the weirdest looking things. But they, were, but they seemed friendly. What color was his skin again? Uh, they, it was like greenish. It was a weird color, like greenish blue, maybe. Okay. You know, like in between green and blue. It just wasn't a certain solid color. It was just, uh, it seemed like, the, it seemed like it, it was, it's been so long I can't hold really remember. It might have been like greenish gray. Sure. Sure. But it seemed like the front of them was different color than the back of them. Were there any ever uh, UFOs seen in your area? Well, well, my, my family has seen them, but I've never seen one. Okay. How long ago? My uncle was coming to my house one night to visit, and he said he seen a big uh, object in the sky that looked like a Ferris wheel turned sideways. But it looked like a Ferris wheel turning. And he said, and he said that he seen it way out in the mountain. And he said it had a a beam of light coming down the middle of it. And he said all of a sudden that beam of light went back up in it, and he said it shot up to the sky real fast. He said it couldn't be no military plane or nothing like that because we ain't got that kind of technology. And, uh, you know, he's a truthful guy, too, uh, and I, I kind of I believe him. How long ago was it that they had seen the UFO? I would say eight to 12 months after uh, I had that, that Sasquatch shot and Dogman shot, but eight or 12 months later. Because we got rid of our hogs, and that solved the problem, and we never did see them no more. Mm. Because I said that was the only thing they probably had to feed off of. We lived up there at the perfect place for a Sasquatch to survive. There was a natural spring I could take you to it. It drains all the way down to have a cold holler, and it was the best, uh, government tested it. And he said it was a pierced water in Kentucky. And it fills this pond up here now. They got a pond up there. But up above it, it's a natural spring that comes down this big rock. And the government tested it, said that was the best water they've ever tested. It does the most pierced water, probably, in the United States there. It's still untouched there. See, when I lived up there, it, it was the only house up there. And uh, I owned 160 acres in out of my mom and dad got divorced. I divided the land up between me and my two sisters. He owned, he owned a lot, of, a lot, a lot, for close to a thousand acres. And uh, we started off, you know, plot by plot to her family, let them live on it, you know. It went from one house probably to, I'd say there's close to 40 up there now. But, uh, where, where they buried that Sasquatch, I know exactly where it's at. You said your, your, um, your father is still alive that was involved with that? Yeah, what my grandpa told me, he said it probably wasn't there no more because them things would uh, bury their own, probably would bury their own kind because he said there was like a tribe. And he said they probably dug it up and put it somewhere else. I, it'd be interesting for someone to check, though, but... <laughs> uh, well, I know exactly where it's at. It's at our family graveyard. About... 50 yards up above it.
it's buried by your family it's graveyard. By your family graveyard. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Because we wanted to pay respect to it. We said a prayer for it. And, then, uh, and uh, you know, and tried to respect the land there because that land respected because our man law t- uh, told us to put it on the most respected land we know. And that was our, that was our family cemetery. So were, were you there for, really it was a, a burial of a Bigfoot and there's almost a, a funeral service for it in a way. Yeah, we said, we said a prayer over it and, uh, you know, and didn't, didn't want no disrespect and uh, didn't want no harm from the rest of them and uh, we, we never had no problems. And, and oh yeah, well, I had nothing. I forgot to tell you about this one. Man, this old lady, uh, she comes and gets me, takes me to my doctor's appointment. And about two miles down below where we buried that one, we seen, we seen one run across the road. And it scared her so bad, she had to stop and pull off the side of the road for about 20 minutes before she could drive again. She was shaking like a dog, shitting razors, Lord forgive me. But she, and, uh, she said, I'll never make fun of people that say they've seen that thing again. But see, around here, man, all, all the old timers that's still alive, well, that's talked about this like, you know, they've lived here, uh, that they own this land of the Sasquatch there because they've lived here a lot longer than we have and a lot longer than the Native Indians, too. See, this was about 40,000 acres that the government took from Chief Redbird. And he was Cherokee chief. And my grandmother filth the uh, uh, he's her filth, filth great grandpa. And that's how she still lives up there. Well, right here where I'm sitting at. All right. I take pictures of them all the time. Fair enough. But they're very elusive and they duck down. I got a perfect picture of one said. Oh, oh, I had some Latter day Saints people come here and see me. You know, try to talk me into their religion. I'm Pentecost. I said, Let me show you a picture of a Sasquatch. Now, I, I zoomed it up on my camera and it blowed their minds. Wow! <laughs> Well, you can see its head perfectly today. You know how they got that cone head? It was a female because I sent it around to the left. And I sent it pick up something. And I guess it was a little one, a baby. Because this old man up there, he said he's been hearing a baby cry. And uh, I got a picture. I got a good picture of it. But you have to zoom it up. You know, to see it. But uh, right here is a is Sasquatch Valley, brother. And I tell you what, when I was little, I don't know, I don't know, I might, you can call me crazy, but I, I find these little valleys that was who uh, that was wolfed over with limbs like uh, trails that would like go into rooms. And you go into these rooms, man, they'd have these little holes. They had one hole looking straight at my house. They had one hole looking straight at the hogs. They had one hole, you know, looking, looking, looking down the holler, says it was coming. And uh, that was so weird. You ever heard of that? Uh, not like something said, it, it super like close to that. Road, man, because I see the track when it, you know when it rained when I went in there, and they and they they wave these little trip these little bushes over, and it was like tunnels you go through like a maze, hmm. and it went into like not I can't say rooms, but it went into like little hiding spots where it was. I think these things are smarter than we are. I I agree absolutely. 
I sure did because, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the one I seen in 2017, uh, August 17th, it, it was the same Sasquatch that saved my life. Mm. But if it hadn't come, I would have been a dead man. I wouldn't be here talking to you. Because Absolutely. it about, it, it about had the hinges tore off the door. It had one of them tore off the top of the end. It was one in there bad to kill me. I had a 410 in there, but, you know, I felt defenseless with it because I was just, you know, 10 or 12 years old. And, I, you know, my my dad was all about safety and stuff. And, you know, he learned me about guns early. And uh, I did have a 410. Because so I was scared. I said, Daddy, won't you let me take my little shotgun up there? He said, well, you won't need it. But, you know, I was uh, having ominous vibes, you know, the few months before. I never did say nothing, but I was getting ominous vibes. And I had the time that hogs wouldn't even come out to eat. And, you know, our hogs loved to eat. But I poured out in their, in their trough and run straight back to the house. I could tell when everything was all right, they'd all run out and eat. Happy as, you know, all hydro or how happy are they? But uh, those times they wouldn't even come out. And this one time they wouldn't come out, there was about three inch splits between the boards, and that was about seven foot high. And this thing grabbed the one by the leg at the bottom board. And it reached its arm all the way over in there. And it grabbed it by its hind leg and it flipped it up over its shoulder like it was nothing. And it was easy, a 200 pound hog. And we usually harvest, it was about ready to harvest. We harvested them around 200, 250 pounds. And it threw it hit over its shoulder like it was nothing. Imagine what that could do to a human being or a dog, you know. A uh, guy, a guy went out west there with them boys, you know, but to find the dog man, he wanted me to go with him, you know, uh, because that's wanting to hold me on as a security because, you know, I, I got a background in the military. Sure. But I told him, I said, boys, I, I said, uh, all I got is, all I got is a nine millimeter and it wasn't played to one around. It just make it mad. Uh-huh. 11 rounds of a 9 millimeter was I wouldn't go I was scared because they, well I, I, I was going to and they called me and they said the gate was locked and I know it was a 6 to 10 mile walk back there where he had that sighting and I wasn't about to get 10 mile back in there and have to walk back out right yeah exactly them guys walked in there was on the Braver than I was, but they, they hired some kind of security guy. He was redheaded. I think he had the pump shotgun. I think he had a background in the military. He was a redheaded guy, and he was the one seeing the his trees are shaking. He, he had an experience. He did. Well, two of them did. Because I believe that was Sasquatch shaking the trees, because I don't think dog men do that. It's liable to be dog man because uh, every time every time uh, we got a hog mess and we find it in a fork of a tree somewhere. Corporal, it's been a pleasure chatting with you tonight. Thank you for yeah, pleasure talking for to you too, brother. For sharing, you know, and and getting down what you've experienced over the years. Um, I really appreciate yeah, you I, allowing you me would. to uh, chat with you. It made me feel better to get it off my shoulders, too. Absolutely. Um, please, if you could reach out to people like your your father or your cousins or anyone that has had interactions with Bigfoot or Dogman, feel free to pass on my information i would love to chat with them if they're up for it so well i kind of i'll tell you right now i doubt my dad's chat with me <laughs> because right. you know uh 
I called him about it, and uh, and uh, and he told me just best to leave it alone. But uh, I can get permission from him to show you where uh, I can show you on Google Map about exactly where it's buried. I would love that, and if he's even able. to... I don't know if he's at a point where he's able to share the the film that he has in his trunk. I doubt he is, but yeah. if he is, you know, that would be well, cool to I'll see as well. I'll ask him. Okay. But, you know, he's in, bad, he's in bad shape and he's got colon cancer. And, uh, yes, sir. You know, God forbid if anything happens to me, to him, I'll have, I'll have the film. Sure. But I do know exactly where it was buried. Well, if you get the permission to share that, I would be more than happy okay, to I, listen I, to I, you I, talk. I'll I, I call him in the morning and ask him, can I get permission to share it? Then I'll text you back. And uh, I ain't good on coordinates or nothing. Sure. Really, because these mountains are tricky. But I know exactly where was buried. Absolutely. And thank you too. And um, uh, it's helped me to talk to you because uh, this has been a balsam to me, man. I, when you see something like that in real life, it shakes you, it shakes you to the core, man. And uh, and uh, I think about it probably ninety eight percent of every day. Yes, sir. I can't get it out of my mind. Well, always feel free to reach out. Red eye, I'm saying, I yeah. see it. Things red eyes are glowing right now, just like it was yesterday. Mm. Huh. I wish you the best, and always feel free to reach out if you need to. Okay, sir? Okay, and I call my dad in the morning, but... I call him usually about nine nine thirty every morning. Check on him, and uh, I'll ask him, "Can I uh, show you guys where where that's buried?" And if you want to go try to dig it up, you can. All right, very good, Corporal. Thank you so much. Okay. God bless. Have a great you. night. Thank you, you as for well, talking sir. To me. Absolutely. Okay, we'll talk to you later. You. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at bigfootsociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all it's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because i know you haven't been sleeping i understand what you're going through and i appreciate every one of you listening